Not every day you get to uh, broadcast from the bottom of a skyscraper, especially in North Dakota. So I guess I've, I've been in the, uh, the you know state capitol a few times, right? Uh, but uh, you know, uh, kind of neat to be here, especially under one that's uh, newly constructed, going up right now, 19 floors, 235 feet. And uh, our next guest is representing the group that goes to town to get it built, the Building Trades Union President, Jason Ellard. Hey, Jason, how are you? Good morning, Scott. Uh, thank you for having me. You bet. Nice to see you. So, uh, yeah, uh, if your guys aren't here, it's, it, that doesn't go in the air, right? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, it's, uh, it's a, a, a project that putting the, the steel, the glass, all the, the concrete, everything out there, everything that you see, well, our guys have been putting it up here. So. And I would imagine it's got to be kind of fun for, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the labor to be part of something that's a signature project at the skyscraper and not something you see every day in North Dakota, right? No, absolutely not. You know, that's the, the one key thing about for us in, in, as members is in the construction, you get that, uh, you get that sense of success. Um, you have a project that you can highlight to whether your family members, your sons, your daughters, uh, Anybody that will listen to it to, to, to ad nauseum, I'll, I'll even drive my family, my daughters nuts of like, yeah, well, I worked on that project, I work on that project. Yeah, Dad, Dad, can we get to dance already? I mean, I, you know, I, I don't need, <laughs> we don't need to review every project you've ever worked on, but you get a fulfillment uh, working in the trades, uh, working with your hands, building projects as significant of this or schools or whatever it may be. How many of your members, roughly, were working on this project? Uh, you know, that, that's a great question. I don't know for the full numbers, but I know there was hundreds of members, uh, concrete, cement masons, iron workers, bricklayers, electricians, uh, members of every trade out there, trade union, that were putting this thing together and make sure it come undone and, or came done and uh, on time. So. And, of course, you look across North Dakota, there's so much going on. You and I have talked before yeah. about uh, your work in keeping the power plants rolling and, <laughs> and uh, the works that happens there with the Lignite industry, very, very important partner in, in all of that. But we, got, we have things going on in every corner, and without skilled labor, uh, you know, that doesn't happen. No, absolutely not. No, the, and that's the real focus for us is, is delivering a project on time, on budget, but building up that workforce, uh, training them, educating them, uh, and, and changing that narrative because I think too many times that I think uh, – Maybe people don't look at a, a construction as a viable career pathway because you think, uh, well, what, well, you're going to get dirty. Well, yeah, you are going to get dirty, but you are going to build projects like this, something that will stand the test of time and, and really define a skyline for Fargo for decades to come and maybe the next project that will be towering than this. But, you know, we, we love doing these kinds of things. Speaking of, uh, of getting, you know, uh, kids uh, that they're thinking about what career they want to get into, excited about the, the building trades, Mike Almendinger was telling me about the visual reality project you did with this that you take into the schools, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, so that's always been one of the challenges we've had when we talk to, to young people in schools, uh, uh, encouraging them to explore a career in the trades. Um, you, you'll have, uh, and then if you've ever worked with kids or students or anything, you kind of get that blank state, uh, stare at you and, okay, what are we talking about here? So we, uh, we utilized a company called Be More Colorful to give us a virtual reality uh, job site tour. So with a 360 camera, if the student puts on an Oculus, um, they can see the block nine in reality when, when they're putting it together, putting the precast on there, when they're putting the piping, the cast iron piping together, when an electrician is putting conduit. And uh, it, it gives a real sense of being there, being on the project. And, and when you say, okay, when I talk about being a cement mason, what does that mean? Uh, when you talk about being an iron worker, well, this is what that is all about. So. Um, you know, there's a variety of career pathways in the building trade unions. Uh, you know, you have your carpentry, your electrician, your plumber. But beyond that, what you know, what does a glazer mean? What does a uh, an iron worker mean? What does an insulator mean? So, it, it's hopefully to get out that piece of information to a young person that is maybe potentially looking at either college or maybe looking at a different career pathway. Um, oh, okay, I see what you guys are doing, and and hopefully kind of channel into that. By the way, Be More Colorful is a great North Dakota success story, too. They've done some work for us, mm. and uh, I've seen their work in a lot of other places, and it really, it's a very important tool, right? Absolutely. It, yeah. it, it's awesome. And every, uh, we've done a, a few career fairs. I was actually just in Williston yesterday doing a career fairs with that, and the students, once they, they put it on and they see that, they, they go, oh, wow, this is really amazing. This is cool. But, uh, you know, I love these kinds of tools of the trade. It's now to have that conversation of how you finish up and how, you know, this is what we do with an apprenticeship program. This is how we train you. Um, it it kind of goes in all of that narrative. Is it uh, a challenging time for you, like every other, uh, you know, industry and business right now, in getting that talent? 
<clears throat> yeah, I, I actually sit on the Governor's Workforce Development Council and we're really tasked with trying to solve this issue. And uh, it, it is an immense challenge. The uh, I mean, construction, manufacturing, nursing, uh, I, when we hear these reports from every industry, they can be utilizing, you know, five, 10, 20 more people. And, and you, when you look at those numbers, you're like, oh my gosh, how do we do that? So really what we're trying to do within the Workforce Development Council is, is a couple different strategies of how, you know, maybe recruitment and retainment um, and, and uh, you know, maybe build from within. Uh, that's what our big belief is, is uh, build up North Dakotans, uh, redefining what a skilled trade looks like. Uh, what our registered apprenticeship program is about and how that can train the next generation. Is Do you think things are different when you were thinking about what you wanted to do uh, for a career? Do you think, uh, you know, uh, kids that age now think differently about what a good career is? Yeah, I, I think they're, they're starting to get that message out there. Um, and I know a lot of teachers, uh, I'm a former teacher myself, and, uh, and I think educators, counselors, when they're hearing these things of, uh, every, every teacher is always going to want to do the best for their student. They want to have that career opportunity. But what does that look like? So uh, we'll come in and we'll talk to students and we'll talk to teachers about uh, registered apprenticeship programs, how we can train. It's a low-cost system of education. It's earning what you learn. Um, you know, I, not ever, I was never, I took college, but, you know, taking a test didn't really full, you know, show off my knowledge. But then when I was a bricklayer putting a building together, I, I, I found a real passion and I could really demonstrate what I knew. So, so we have some programs that, that uh, you know, make these things possible. For one, uh, it, but for uh, uh, the vision of the Fargo City Commission and uh, prior to that, the North Dakota Legislature with the Renaissance Zone, projects like this don't happen. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you guys, uh, you know, get ever called into that fray <laughs> to say, hey, we, we like these because more projects will happen as a result of them? Absolutely. And then that's been one of the things that I've talked with uh, Michael Mdinger and then the city of Fargo and, and, and TIFFs and Renaissance. I've been getting some extra scrutiny on there. Where we like to talk about it is, you know, I, I, we can put names and faces. We can show people who actually benefited from this project. Yeah, it's a tower. It's, this has been the culmination of probably 20 years of visions by the Kilbourne Group, by... Uh, that downtown partnership of okay, let's bring this thing to to reality. What this really benefit for us with the Renaissance zones is putting our members to work, bringing home a paycheck, bringing home something that they could provide for their family, health insurance, retirement, uh, getting back in, giving back to the community, and that's really where we look at with uh, these Renaissance zones is is the giving back. I always give them the but for test. Oh. And, and the but for test simply is this, you know, if, if you can show me on paper that unless these programs happen and are available, then it, then it won't happen, right? So in other words, that project doesn't happen. That 19 stories doesn't happen with the, with the, with the state legislature saying Renaissance Zone and the city commission saying, here you go, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe that to be true. That, that they wouldn't have, they wouldn't pencil out. It, you know, again, it's expensive, you've got to charge, you've got to keep your rents at a, a certain spot and everything else. And then I say, okay, well, if it actually, then they went ahead with it, and, and, uh, and I'm wrong, right? It would have happened anyway. What was the cost of that? <laughs> and, I, and I could sit there and say, well, you know, the cost is really, really small when you look at the long-term economic impact to all of your members, what, what, what they got paid doing part of this project and everything else. So, you know, even, even if you say, gosh, I don't know, I think it would happen anyway. First of all, they have to prove that it won't pencil out. I mean, they have to, they have to prove that and make that happen. So I think, that's, I, I think that's where it makes a whole lot of sense. And I think it also makes sense to bring folks like you in to make that case because the beneficiaries aren't fat cats or <laughs> anything else that they're trying to suggest have impure motives. It's, it's workers, right? Yeah, yeah. It, what I always like to talk about is an investment. You know, you can always say cost and benefit analysis and you can look at all these things. Um, when you look at it, it's an investment. Um, building a school in your community, that's an investment. Uh, uh, you know, putting a clean or a, a reliable power uh, that's readily available, that's an investment. Um, look at how many things have come from all of that. You know, what, what spurs the next level of growth? What spurs uh, the next uh, maybe startup to come to Fargo because now there's some office space available here in a downtown setting. Um, Quite a ripple effect of that investment. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and especially for our, 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 our building unions, our building trades union members. Um, you know, were they able to, to provide for their family? Uh, continuing that construction growth, uh, developing a new apprentice into a journey worker. It's, it's always kind of an investment giving back. So um, as you look to the future and finding more, uh, you know, uh, folks like Jason Allard out there that are going to, uh, want to be part of this, want to roll up the sleeves and, and, and go to work. I mean, do you feel like we're making progress on the, on the workforce crisis? 
<laughs> it, it, it's a, it is a challenge, you know, but it's a good challenge to have, uh, you know, how we redefine. I mean, I don't think there with anything that I've been seeing on the workforce development, um, you know, for us in the construction trades uh, of trying to redefine what a good successful career work looks like working in the trades. Uh, we're not going to be appealing to everyone. Not everyone really wants to to, to work outside or will work in their uh, in the building trades, um, but that's why you have more IT people. You have more management. Um, the I think we're doing some good things on the workforce development council. It is a huge challenge um, with so many jobs available, so many um, uh, and such a high workforce participation. But uh, you know what we're doing with uh, Michelle Comer that's sitting on there is, is the chairwoman of that and. Uh, working in some subcommittees on, on redefining skilled trades and, and how to do that. Uh, I think we're making some good progress. I've been to one of your meetings. And oh. it's, it's not for show. No. It's, there's, some, there's a lot of work that gets done and a lot on that agenda and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, rolling through it. I mean, I, I too believe that uh, Michelle is uh, doing a great job at the Department of Commerce and, and, and that entire council, the Governor's Workforce Development Council, is exactly what the doctor ordered to take on this uh, thing but it's a 365 24 7 mm -hmm. deal right yeah exactly the it's it's not going to be solved overnight uh but you know a lot of times we, we i look at it as you know this didn't happen overnight so uh workforce development training education changing that narrative that's going to take a couple years but those are good problems to have they sure are jason thank you thank you, thank you very much appreciate for it very me. much